Hello, I'm uh, John Gribben from Barts Cancer Institute in London. Welcome to very hot and steamy uh, Vienna, where we're here for the European uh, Hematology Association meeting. I'm joined by very esteemed international panel of experts to review uh, the highlights of, of the meeting. So if we'd introduce ourselves, uh, Umberto. I'm uh, Umberto Vitolo from Hematology University Hospital uh, Città della Salute and della Scienza, Torino, Italy. My name is Maria Victoria Mateos and I work as a hematologist at the University Hospital of Salamanca in Spain. I'm Paolo Ghia from uh, Milano, Italy and working at the uh, Università um, San Rafael in Milano. Okay, so what we have is a panel of experts in lymphoma, myeloma, CLL covering the spectrum of the hematologic malignancies that we've been seeing in the meeting. So tell me, Umberto, what have you seen so far at the meeting that struck you as exciting this year? Oh, well, there's uh, many, of course, uh, topics of uh, polyphoma in this meeting. Uh, also, uh, a more topics will be uh, next week because sure. there is the, the International lymphoma. Malignant yeah. Lymphoma Conference in Lugano. But anyhow, there's uh, some couple, uh, a couple of um, interesting presentations in mantle cell lymphoma uh, yesterday that uh, cover uh, the use of novel drugs. In this case, uh, there was a... Uh, a first uh, presentation made by our group in which uh, we presented the results in, in young patients uh, with high-dose chemotherapy autologous stem cell transplantation followed by uh, maintenance with lenalidomide compared versus observation. The results uh, so far are preliminary, so we had only the results uh, for the first part of the study, but it's uh, interesting that uh, uh, to note that uh, the complete remission was quite high after high dose or C, about 77%, uh, along with the uh, MRD negativity, but with additional autologous stem cell transplantation, it doesn't seem to increase so much. So th I think uh, because only a few points more after uh, high dose chemotherapy. So I think it's an uh, open window uh, regarding if we can spare uh, high dose chemotherapy, maybe uh, uh, autologous stem cell transplant in this patient, maybe with addition of novel drug like. Uh, lenalidomide in the maintenance or ributinib in, uh, in combination with chemotherapy. There are some ongoing studies, uh, some ongoing trials uh, that uh, had uh, aimed at this point, just uh, adding novel drugs to chemotherapy backbone plus, of course, anti t 20 antibodies in order to spur a more aggressive treatment that usually is required for the treatment of mantle cell lymphoma. Are these minimal residual disease endpoint studies? Or are they built? Have they built assessment of MRD into uh, the design of the study? Yes, MRD was a secondary point of the study, but it was assessed uh, after each step mm. of the treatment, after uh, the first courses of uh, RCHOP, standard RCHOP, then after high dose chemotherapy bef uh, with RRC before autologous stem cell transplant, and during the maintenance. Uh, the data so far we have uh, uh, is uh, in uh, quantity PCR was 70% uh, uh, of RD negativity before autologous stem cell mm -hmm. transplant and after autologous stem cell transplant 72%. So mm. it doesn't seem, it doesn't to, seem add, to add so to add much for the toxicity. And we we'll see in the future during sure. the, so, the maintenance uh, period. Uh, so watch the space for the follow-up of, uh, of the study is basically where we are at this point. Uh, as the, the maintenance is planned for two years and uh, I hope that we have the data for the maintenance next year, okay. next year of course. Okay. And in terms of, of myeloma, lots of new drugs emerging in this field of course for those of us who aren't myeloma experts look at it and think how on earth do you start deciding which of these so many new agents appearing are going to be the ones going forward. So what's your view of where the field's going based upon what we've heard here? So absolutely, novel agents are coming for all hematological diseases and uh, also for myeloma. So from this uh, European Hematology Association meeting, I would uh, like to highlight uh, novel agents, uh, second generation proteasome inhibitors mm -hmm. and uh, Carfilzomib has demonstrated in a large randomized trial to be superior to bortezomib plus dexamethasone with a significant benefit in terms of overall response rate, complete remission rate, and also duplication of the median progression-free survival. Mm. 
with less toxicity or is the toxicity similar? Toxicity is uh, so it's different mm. because uh, carfilzomib has uh, a specific toxicity profile. Carfilzomib does not induce peripheral neuropathy mm. as occurred with bortezomib. But However, it has been a big problem for patients to, to tolerate. So uh, do you find it better tolerated? Uh, yes, I think that uh, definitely the tolerability is uh, better, mm. although uh, we have to be careful with some side effects mm. such as uh, renal impairment or cardiac toxicity, but in a specific subgroup of patients. Sure. I would like also to highlight uh, novel agents such as uh, HDAC inhibitors that uh, they have been evaluated also in randomized trials and uh, panobinostata plus bortezomib and dexamethasone showed to be superior to bortezomib plus dexamethasone. But uh, what I would like to highlight uh, of this IHA meeting is that uh, as sub-analysis have been conducted in patients who had uh, been previously exposed to bortezomib and imids. And in this specific subgroup of patients, heavily pretreated patients, the difference, the benefit in median progression-free survival has been much more evident with a median progression-free survival benefit of approximately seven months for panobinostata, bortezomib and dexamethasone, confirming the role of HDAC inhibitors mm -hmm. in the management of myeloma patients. And uh, finally, I would like to highlight uh, the immunotherapy yes. strategies uh, through monoclonal antibodies. Uh, today, we have had the opportunity to, to hear from Sagarlonial from the US the results of daratumumab as single agent in heavily pretreated myeloma patients exhausted to all conventional agents, bortezomib, thalidomide, lenalidomide, carfilzomib, and pomalidomide, and uh, this patient responded to daratumumab single agent, emerging as a, a possible backbone for mm. all regimes in the treatment of myeloma patients. Sure. And accessible to younger and older patients. Yes. Uh, results are very preliminary, only in 100 mm. patients, but uh, it seems not to have any differences according to the age. Sure. And of course in CLL, lots more on the novel agents and follow-up. So what struck you in CLL of, that you've heard from this meeting today? Yeah, now the novel agents are a reality in CLL since a couple of years at least. So I would say that this meeting in particular has been like a consolidation phase. So we saw the long-term results of uh, the use of ibrutinib or idelalizib plus rituximab and indeed they confirm uh, durable responses. They confirm also the toxicity profile that we are now aware of, and uh, uh, in particular the diarrhea that is uh, uh, quite uh, um, frequent, uh, around 40% in patients treated with idelalizib in the long run. Um, new molecules have been presented also um, of the same uh, uh, family, I would say, so a, a, another uh, PIC kinase delta inhibitor, TG1202, that apparently has uh, um, uh, less uh, um, yeah, toxicity. The, the toxicity yeah, does yeah. seem less, yeah, Several less GI less, toxicity, uh, less hepatitis. It is true that the follow-up is only six short, months, yeah, yeah. So, but still uh, only 2% apparently, mm -hmm. so that would be good news. And then we saw also the results of the um, uh, PIC kinase gamma delta, so the dual inhibitors uh, um, on, uh, also on CLL and other uh, malignancies, and the results are also quite in line with what we have been, uh, what we learned about idealism. And uh, of course, the, what we are waiting for are the long-term results of uh, um, uh, the, BT, the BCL2 inhibitors, the ABT199. Yeah, the, the, the Australian colleagues showed the um, uh, results after 30 months of follow-up of uh, even patients who's uh, in complete remission who uh, stopped the drug because of any uh, reason, and they, uh, they showed durable responses uh, even outside uh, of therapy. And uh, they confirmed the 40, over 40% 40 of uh, complete remissions uh, with uh, a very high number, around uh, almost 50% of patients with uh, MRD, of the patients responding. Uh, so these are promising results and uh, so the future appears to be quite bright. In sure. I mean, I think the ABT studies showing the MRD negativity look really intriguing because one of the things I was going to come back to talk to all of you about are all of these novel agents greatly increase the potential cost. And certainly in Europe, we have to be thinking about the, the cost to our patients. And I guess I was asking about MRD in the mantle cell setting. You certainly look at that a lot in, in myeloma and now in CLL, but therapy that potentially has a beginning and end, 
um, is, is probably where we're looking to go forward, I think, in all of these diseases, rather than continuous therapy. Do you agree? No, you, if I can answer you, I, I think you're totally right, because uh, there's a couple of issues. The first one, as you uh, remember, the issue of the cost, that it's uh, because all these drugs are probably at a high uh, cost, so it's difficult to think that we can give to a patient for a life. The second point may be that we don't know exactly yet uh, uh, the long-term toxicity of the drug because uh, all these agents uh, um, are active on B cells, uh, um, B cell receptors, uh, pathway, and so on. So we don't know exactly after some years of exposure how it will be the immune, the immune functions uh, of our patient. Of course, the first goal is to cure the patients. That's uh, we need to cure probably in, in the relapse setting, but. Uh, I believe that uh, we need to know more on, on these drugs and also to try to design uh, smarter studies in order to, uh, to fix uh, an end to, to this treatment. Maybe like in CML, uh, as you know, in CML after some years of uh, complete molecular emission, we are thinking now to stop the TIK inhibitors and maybe also in lymphoma and in CLL, I don't know if myeloma. But, uh, we should uh, think something similar to CML. Of course, in myeloma now, we're seeing, because you have so many agents available, people going through seven, eight, li nine lines of therapy. It's becoming increasingly common to see patients surviving a very long period of time. But of course, we also see that patients are sometimes surviving a very long period of time with myeloma with still having increasing morbidity from the skeletal um, complications of the disease. Are, th are there ways in which we think that some of these new agents are going to impact the, the long-term quality of life of your patients? Yeah, I think that uh, it is uh, necessary to do quality of life studies in all trials that we are going to conduct because uh, you are right and the survival of our myeloma patient is uh, clearly increasing. In fact, uh, with the daratumumab, 60% of the patient remain alive uh, after one year. And uh, this is uh, surprising because uh, in, the, in the past, uh, these patients uh, didn't, uh, were, uh, were not alive more than nine or 10 months. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, our efforts uh, have uh, to be toward that uh, direction, not only to survive, to be alive for more time, but to try to improve the quality of life, of course, because uh, the bone disease uh, is one important issue in sure. myeloma patients, and uh, so we have to try to control and to improve this uh, symptomatology. Sure. So, Paolo, of course, in CLL, the approved agents that we have are, are continuous therapy at very high potential cost. Do you, do you also believe that the future has to be to find a way to, to get these patients into a, a, a status where we can potentially stop the drug? Or? Yeah, definitely, yes. And uh, indeed, the next generation of clinical trials will be a um, combination of the drug. So we understood that with these new products, we, we are not we cannot achieve a complete remission, or at least the vast majority of patients. So the future is very likely to combine with something else, and ABT199 is probably one of the best candidate studies are starting uh, or are, are designed uh, to combine uh, with uh, either brutin or idelalizib and uh, um, or duvelizib even. Um, so this is the way in order to reach uh, uh, more profound responses, uh, MRD-negative responses, and especially to stop uh, after a definite, de definite time uh, the sure. treatment. The idea, of course, would be that even though the cost is three times as much if because you combine three agents, it's at correct. least for a defined period of time and then you can stop, Yes, right? then, uh, of course, I mean, you spend a lot, but if, if that is for six months, as we were used to do with the chemotherapy, then probably it's more affordable than just uh, having no limit in the future. Okay, so what you are hearing from uh, Vienna is um, continued excitement that in the hematologic malignancies there's a, a huge number of novel agents which are being used alone and in combination looking to improve the duration of responses, the quality of life applicable to younger and older patients in a way that chemotherapy wasn't in the past. So these remain very exciting times in terms of the management of hematologic malignancies.